What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be talking about and breaking down the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade right now in the end of November, heading into the month of December in 2019. And I also want to go over what the markets did last week by briefly taking a look at the S&P 500, as well as breaking down what the stock market futures are looking like right now so we can plan our trades and kind of get an idea of what the market could open up at tomorrow in tomorrow's session. But before we do get into all of this good stuff, guys, all I ask from you is if you enjoyed the video, just simply go down below, hit that like button, and consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and join our Strive Smart Discord group chat as well as our Strive Smart Facebook group if you want to be further connected with me and our entire community of investors and traders. So guys, let's just get right into it it and go to the five day five minute chart here on the S&P so we can get an understanding of what happened in last week's session by just looking at the last five trading days. So you guys can see here on the 18th of November, we did well. The next day we gapped up. I believe this was an all time high. Um, and then after that all time high, we pretty much consolidated on the 19th of November. And then boom, guys, we saw a big correction, a big sell off all the way down to about 3091 and from there we saw another day of a sell off right we actually dumped one day two days we were seeing a bit of resistance under that 180 SMA here then ultimately on Friday guys we broke out of that level um, being the 180 SMA of resistance and we had a green day up six dollars and 75 cents up 0.22 percent and this move on Friday like I mentioned I believe it was on Friday's video very huge move for for the bulls out there heading into the weekend because if we go to that 20 day one hour chart you guys can see this seems like a bottom for the S&P 500 at a higher low from the previous and Friday's nice green push really solidified that and if we actually gap above the 50 SMA tomorrow and the futures are actually green right now which is likely to happen that's going to be very very good for the bulls that's what we want to see or rather the bulls want to see not saying I'm a bull or a bear right now um, I'm kind of bullish in the short term but you know if you're a bull you definitely want to see what that has to happen or that you definitely want to see that happen for a higher continuation right so let's take a look at these futures really quickly like I kind of hinted they're green right now which is why I could see an all-time high in the near-term future in terms of a you know a technical basis here based on technicals right so the ES right here the e-mini S&P 500 index futures they're up a quarter percent right now up seven dollars and 75 cents and you guys can see the nice bullish gap up here and if this holds you know we go back to that S&P we should be above that 50 SMA in tomorrow's session again that's if this holds and obviously if it goes higher that's going to be put it, pushing us even higher on the S&P right so the Nasdaq right now it's up 0.3 percent this gap up is looking quite bullish right we have about a, a I think it's like a triple bottom here about three different bottoms and now with this gap up up 0.3 percent like I said we're trending above that uh, 180 SMA of resistance and we're also breaking out of the overall downtrend which is good here so that's looking really really bullish in terms of the Nasdaq futures now if we go to the Dow Jones futures they're also looking really bullish guys up 75 points up 0.25% right now and you guys can see with this gap up it's really just trying to push up to those all time highs again and in my opinion this gap up really solidifies this bottom as a higher low for um, the Dow Jones and again for all the other markets the uh, S&P and the NASDAQ included so that is looking extremely bullish in my personal opinion so now we can segue into what I'm watching this upcoming week and by the way let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts on the markets right now are we going higher are we going lower trade tensions are they going to spike are they going to decrease what do you guys think here as well as Ray Dalio's opinion or not really opinion that that hedge bet that we saw what do you guys think about that as well let me know down below there in the comments so let's talk about natural gas first and foremost here because I know a lot of you guys trade this I trade this and we 
we, we, we watch it as a community all the time. So let's start off and talk about what this is looking like right now. So what I'm looking at here is slash NGF20. That's the ticker. Natural Gas Futures January Dash 2020. That's what we're looking at right here. So if we zoom in a bit to the five day, five minute to get an idea of what's happening here, you guys can see we actually gapped up, which is a good sign here for the bulls. This is showing that momentum is to the upside here. If you guys remember last week, we gapped down, if I'm not mistaken, um, on Sunday in terms of the futures market when it opened at 6 p.m. And that was obviously bearish. But now again, the fact that we're gapping up, uh, we saw the big gap up to 274. That means momentum's to the upside. That is looking good from, from a bullish perspective. But the thing is, we've actually pulled down since that, uh, you know, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Future open gap up that we saw here to 274. We actually filled the gap back down to about 269. 270. So if I'm a bull, right, if I'm a bull on natural gas right now, what do I want to see? I obviously want to see this hold 270 and ultimately break back up to test 274 where we ended up again gapping up here about an hour and 10 minutes ago. So ultimately what I'm looking for tomorrow from the bullish perspective is exactly what I just showed you guys um, by this uh, trend line arrow little little thingy my jigger right here that you're seeing that is what i want to see right a gap up a pop and the push if i'm on the bear side d gas right which goes up when natural gas sells off the technical break to get into d gas that i'd want to see would be obviously a break below 269 270 right that's where we've held once twice three and that and now four times over the past couple of uh you know trading days so that's the level that if we were to break, we could definitely see some further downside from there. So that's kind of a technical breakdown here. In my opinion, this is looking bullish. And again, wait for that potential pop to the upside here for that fill back up to 274. So how does this equate over to you guys? Obviously, guys, you know, natural gas, if we end up going back up to 275 by tomorrow morning, you guys will definitely be gapping up in the pre-market session, right? And if we zoom out to the 20-day, one-hour chart, this is looking really good. Uh, the performance, rather, for the past couple of days for you guys has been looking really good, right? You know, from 20 bucks down to 13 bucks, obviously, that's when natural gas saw that correction. From there, we actually doubled bottomed at 13, and we broke that 50 SMA, which was a really bullish sign. Now, the next bullish sign, uh, bullish sign that I want to see would be be a break above the 180 SMA here on the hourly chart as indicated by this arrow here. So that's kind of what I'm watching heading into the morning. And of course, if natural gas does gap up, that's where you guys will be trading right above that 180 SMA. But again, if natural gas dumps into 270, you know, if we go to D gas really quickly, you know, if natural gas gets into the high 260s, mid 260s, and, and it starts just moving down again, this thing does have about 14 14, 15% margin of profit opened from this pullback. So we could probably make 15, 20%, you know, if natural gas does end up dumping and D gas does end up taking off. And if you guys missed my natural gas um, video from this past Thursday, which I'll link it down below if you want to see a further in depth review of the natural gas report, we actually went over this natural gas report, which I'm not going to go crazy into right now, but this is what the really, really fluctuates natural gas every week. The inventory, um, we can see, we saw a actual withdrawal of natural gas this past Thursday, which is why we're seeing the bullish push here in natural gas. Ever since we got this report, you gas has been going up, right? Because when we get withdrawals of natural gas, as you can see, based on the 94, the negative 94 here, which means we had 94 billion cubic feet of natural 
natural gas withdrawn. Whenever we get that, that means demand is coming in. People are using this stuff and it's squeezing the price up. So that's kind of what we're uh, watching every Thursday and throughout the week. And of course, weather models as well. But again, if you guys want to see that update video of the natural gas report and my opinion on the weather and stuff, go check out that video from Thursday. And again, I'll have it linked down below. So now going back to Thinkorswim, let's talk about some other stocks. So natural gas, of course, you guys, do you guys, I'm watching those all the time, but I love trading large cap stocks as well. That's kind of my go-to. I day trade a lot of these leveraged ETNs, maybe some market ETFs like these listed on my watch list down here, but I also swing trade a lot of large caps, right? That's one of my strategies as well. So let's talk about some of those large caps, starting with Tesla. And Tesla's not necessarily like a mega cap company, but it's still a large cap company that I'm watching here due to one reason that I know a lot of you guys already know about, and that is the Cybertruck, guys. We got the unveiling of the Cybertruck here a couple of days ago, and this is something that has polarized everybody, I feel like, across the world. It's one of the most searched items. I think it was the most searched item on Google. It had like 2 million hits on Google the day, the day it came out, which is insane, right? So there's a lot of attention around Tesla and the Cybertruck right now, and that really plays into the genius of Elon Musk, in my personal opinion, guys. All the free marketing is insane. So there's three different versions of this Cybertruck, right? And obviously, based on the stock's price, the, the market didn't like it initially, right? The stock was down 6%, down about 21 points. But now as we've gotten some data over the weekend involving the Cybertruck and how many people actually put a $100 deposit down, we're starting to see that there are a decent amount of people out there that have demand for this thing, right? So we actually had 145,000 uh, $100 pre-orders, I believe Saturday morning, I believe that was. And we actually just got an update from Elon Musk on Twitter. Um, the most recent update is 184 or 185,000 um, $100 pre-orders were put down, which is insane, right? And get this, guys. The cool thing about it is you'd think most people are going for this $40,000 model, which is the cheapest out of the three, but you'd be mistaken if you're thinking that because most most people are signing up for the other two models, which are the $50,000 model and the $70,000 model, which, or is it $50,000? It might be $60,000. It doesn't really matter. It's the other two above the cheap base model that more people are flocking to, which is insane, right? So from these numbers that we've gotten over the weekend, what is this going to do to Tesla stock? That's kind of what I'm waiting to see here tomorrow morning. Do we get a spike due to these, you know, number of people signing up and honestly guys 185,000 bucks to uh, 185,000 people rather putting that $100 deposit down that's a lot of people, right? And I did some numbers. You know, if they were to hypothetically sell 150,000 of these cyber trucks at like 50K, that comes out at like five, six billion bucks or something like that. If they were to sell all these, um, you know, pre orders, which is insane in terms of a revenue standpoint. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's let this thing come to market first. But in the short term, that you know, 185,000 people number that could end up spiking this stock up tomorrow just because of the initial demand of this. It's kind of telling people like, okay, people might like this. Um, let's buy up this dip, right? That's what people might be thinking. So, you know, this is something interesting. If we do end up gapping up to 340 tomorrow, which is a resistance that I'm watching, um, and we ultimately break out of that, you know, 340 to 350 could be a tradable channel here on Tesla, in my opinion. And then above that, obviously, 360 um, would be the next level. So um, what I'm watching really is just that 340 break tomorrow for Tesla and really any other numbers regarding this Cybertruck because I really think that's what's going to be moving Tesla here at least in the short term. So another stock that I'm watching right now, guys, is going to be good old Disney, ticker symbol DIS. Although this one is near the all-time high, there's not as much potential 
potential in it as there is with Tesla. I still think it's worth watching. Um, really, if it, if it kind of catapults from this level to go to another all-time high because you guys can see, you know, this 150 level that we're at, 148, 150, if we zoom out a bit to the three-year, one-week chart, you know, that's a level that used to be an all-time high, and now the fact that we're holding it, you know, we could potentially go higher from here, right? Five-day, five-minute, especially with the bullish close that we saw um, on Friday and the action after hours. That's looking good, in my opinion, for a higher push, especially if these markets stay green tomorrow in terms of these futures. So I'm watching this for a potential move to 150. That that would be about a 1%. But think about it, guys. This thing could definitely go higher, maybe 155. And, of course, at 155, we can make upwards of 3 4% on the trade. So I definitely think Disney's worth watching, especially especially with the uh, positive momentum it's had, honestly, ever since they reported earnings and ever since they had 10 million signups the day after they released Disney+, Plus, which is a huge catalyst for the stock right now. So another one I'm watching is Chipotle Mexican Grill, guys. This one's kind of been consolidating over the past three, four days. I'm really looking to see now if it catapults its way up to that $800 level and, and really if it pops above this 50 SMA on this hourly chart, right? If we're just judging on this hourly chart, this is looking quite bullish, right? We've broken above the 50 SMA. We found a bottom at about 728. We started making higher highs, higher lows, riding that 50 SMA as a support. We broke above the 180 SMA as well. We're seeing a bullish cross, the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. This is looking really good in my opinion, right? And I'm actually already holding some Chipotle uh, shares right now from the 750 level and I do plan on trading or rather selling it for a profit if it does fill this gap up to that $800 level like I said which would be right under that 180 SMA so Chipotle Mexican Grill really liking this one another one that's been crushing it guys it's been a low key mover here I haven't really been watching it too closely but I just saw it um, while I was doing my research over this weekend it's Square Stock guys ticker symbol S Q and square if we bring out some trend tools here you guys can see that it's been holding that 5960 level really, really nicely as a support, right? That's a level that we got down to um, in the beginning of June. You know, we, we we got down to about 60 bucks. We ran up to 83 after that, right? We saw a terrible earnings report, brought the stock back down to 54 bucks. But over the past two months, it's kind of been fiddling around, um, you know, 50, uh, not really 50, more like 55, 60, right? And now it's finally making that leg up back to that resistance at about 70 bucks after this previous earnings report um, that they actually did quite well on based on on the EPS you guys can see here 25 cents actual versus the 22 cents estimated so is it overbought yeah it's overbought, which is why I'd like to see maybe a pull down uh, to maybe 65, maybe even 66 bucks. F 66 bucks would be ideal here. If we got that pull down, brought the R side down a bit, I think Square um, could definitely be a nice entry. Again, at around 66, maybe 66.50, you know, um, as a fine support and, and starts to climb back up. I think that could also be a good entry. Uh, but overall, Square, you know, let's say from 66 bucks up to 70, that's about 6% potential for profit. Above that to 75, that's about 11%. So this is definitely worth watching in my opinion. The next one is Johnson & Johnson, guys. So this stock has been on fire, guys. And they're actually paying a dividend for those of you guys holding them long term in the month of December. And I believe the X dividend date might it might have already passed, but I think or, or it might be towards the end of this month. Either way, um, you know, this stock has been doing quite well. And just like Square, it's a tad overbought based on the RSI, which is why I'd love to see it pull down to about 136. If we get the pull down to 136, guys, I'm definitely looking to add another position to my swing portfolio, which honestly at this point, guys, has a lot of positions in it. I have McDonald's, um, Chipotle. What else do I have? There's just a bunch in there that I'm holding right now. But either way, J&J, uh, &J, I'm looking to add to that. Again, if we hold 136, because at 136, up to the next resistance at 140, that could be a nice 3% 
profit. Let's say we don't pull, uh, pull down all the way to 136. Let's say we simply retrace to the 180 SMA, or rather that EMA, this light blue line here, and we hold 137. That could also be a dip buy. So this is looking good. 137 is probably the ideal entry. Um, from there, 2% up to 140, up to 142, about 3.5%, and up to about 145. That's going to be around 5, 6%. And honestly, guys, Johnson & Johnson, Johnson has been down in the dumps for a, for a while now, so they're due, in my opinion, for a nice little rally. So don't be surprised if they do get up to the 140s again. I wouldn't really be surprised at all, um, which is why, again, I'm watching them and looking to swing trade them right now. So overall, guys, that's kind of it in terms of what I'm watching. I keep it simple. Um, I don't watch a ton of different stocks. Obviously, I'm sifting through a bunch, but I like to just keep a nice a narrow list in the morning then if nothing really plays out based on my list, then I start looking at other ones, um, like other stocks that weren't on my list originally and so forth. And if I don't see any opportunities for uh, trading day, guys, I don't force anything, right? That's kind of my MO. Um, I don't like over trading. I like trading when I find opportunities. And if I don't find opportunities, I just simply don't trade. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you guys enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me. And if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, don't forget Discord link, the Facebook link, both of those are down below. And if you actually want to buy some Strive Smart merch to support the brand, support me and the channel, that's linked down below as well. We have a bunch of stuff from hoodies, t-shirts, and actually, we have some beanies now, which are really, really sick. So go check that out. Link down below. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.